Uh, sorry about that, folks. If you just took tuning in, you missed a whole bunch of stuff. I'll post the recorded video here in a minute. Um, for those of you folks, well, it's tougher f streaming. It's tougher flying a sim than it is flying a here. So I'm just going to say that. Let's just see. Okay, we'll come back and see if anybody's watching later. Uh, not necessary right this moment. But let's just check one thing here. Make sure we get the chat in there. And there we go. Okay. Uh, if you have any uh, comments or questions, you can put them here, and I'll come back to those in a minute. So back to Cockpit Direct. And we are coming out of here pretty good up to going to GFS. Desert out our window there. Up to the left, same thing. Lots of flat desert. Coming out of the bottom. All right, so there we go. We're looking good. Now, at this point, there's always something that you can do in the plane. So, whenever I get a moment of, uh, of quiet, calm, what I like to do is to use that time to do something good. So, what I'm going to do here. What I typically do is I'm going to come up here, I'm going to switch down and load my frequencies for Santa Monica. Delta, Bravo, Center, Squawk 1356. We're going to start with ATIS right there, flip that in there, and then we're going to put in 120.1, which is tower, and I'm moving back up top. Now that's all done. One less thing to worry about uh, when, when you're flying here. So let's take a look to the right. Left. Okay, we're over. Okay, now we're coming up on 10,000. He'll let us turn at 10,000, I think. So that's the but that's the bell here on the, I presume on the G3 version happened at 1,000 on my G6, uh, 768 Foxtrot Sierra. The bell, uh, which you hear me reference many times in the videos, there's the bell. Happens 200 feet before you get to your cruise altitude. So it's a little bit of a warning, and I love all those audio warnings in the Cirrus. Um, they just you know they treat you. You know they train you like a dog. You just do what you're supposed to do, and that's the way it should be. All righty, there's the view out the side. We're waiting, and what I'm hoping is that he's going to give us direct Hector here in a second. Las Vegas departure Sierra seven six eight Foxtrot Sierra. Uh, can I get direct Hector when I get to ten thousand? Eight Foxtrot Sierra. Yeah, that should work. Clear direct Hector. Clear direct Hector. Thank you very much. Eight Foxtrot Sierra. Okay, now we're going to go to Hector. Okay, which is going to save us a lot of a lot. Excuse me, a lot of room on here. So let's go down. We I selected Hector. Let's go. Direct. Enter. Enter. We're already in nav. So that's going to turn us out. And now we're turning to Hector. And if I put in the. Uh, the iPad here. Uh, you can see that that chopped off quite a bit of room for us. Now, a little trick while I'm out of here. Let's come up big on the cockpit. I'm going to go back over here to flight plan right now. I'm going to go down in here and I'm going to click on Hector, right? And I'm going to go direct to, and you'll notice that now my little plane is synced up and I'm going direct. So, same thing in the plane here. So now I'm coming back into the cockpit here. Back to the default. Let's go back in here. Cockpit. Oops, geez, what was that on the default view? <laughs> okay, what was that? I forget what the heck I was thinking about here. Okay, let's take care of a little business. We're on 29.2. Let's flip our tanks over to the left here. Um, get those things evened out back to the default view. And uh, I wanted to go hit the map button here. Okay, now you can see. What I was getting at with the iPad. Let's go iPad. P there. Okay. Uh, now our our iPad and our MFD are synced up here, so I'm going to go declutter on this so you can see it a little bit better. And there you can see now the lines are synced up. I like to do that because on the iPad you can see right here you have that little glide ring which tells you what where you could get to in the event that your engine went out. Um, on my 
Sierra's Gen 6 Perspective Plus, we also have that glide ring. I don't know about the turbo normalized perspective version of it, uh, but that's something that I look at frequently while I'm flying here. And as you can see, it looks like we got some wind behind us. And sure enough, if I come up here on the, uh, if I come up close here, and let me get over there. If I come up close on the instruments here, oh, hang on. Oh, geez. Ah, gee, sorry. Okay, we are all getting kooky here. Now well, let's go back over here. That. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the guy. I don't know what's going on here. Sports fans. I got a very jumpy little plane here. Okay, there we go. Um, anyway, th those two are in sync now. And let's go back to our, now that we're cruise out, let's go to our cruise checklist. We did climb. All that was good. Airspeed, fuel flow parameters. Now we're at climbs. Let's go up to cruise. We got oxygen not required. Fuel pump is good. Cruise power is set. Now what I'm going to do is pull my mixture back. So let's come up close here. And I'm going to pull it back down to that cyan, cyan marker right here. And if I give it 16.1 gallons-ish, I should get 75%. And with the, uh, let's get our, there we go, 29.5. Not getting me the exact numbers that I like today. 29.5, I believe, is our number. Great Fox, Jets here. Come back to LA Center, 134.65. 134.65, so let me put that in here right now. 134.65. Come back up top here. LA Center, Sierra 768, Fox Rod Sierra, level 10,000. 768, Fox Rod Sierra, LA Center, good afternoon. The Henderson altimeter, 29890. 29890 for Henderson, thank you, Fox Rod Sierra. Okay, so our cruise power is a lot higher today for some odd reason. It's usually 16.1 gets me. That was my fuel pump and boost, it is. Everything's good. All right mystery today. Could be just the heat, you know, I guess. All right, cruise power is set. Engine parameters are good. Everything's in the green, which is where we want to be. Fuel flow and balance is good. So now I'm going to go up. I got descent plugged, so I'm going to head back to the flight plan and back to the map here. And so now we're heading to Rect Hector, and now all we got to do is just kind of wait here, okay? So... All right, so I'm cheating a little bit by increasing the speed one and a half times. 1.7. All right, so that's just going to move us along a little bit faster there, folks. I'm not even going to tell them. We're just going to think our plane's going incredibly fast today. All right, so there you have it. Let's come back over and check and see how we're looking here. So we got everything all set. We're going two times speed right now, so that means we're probably going about 300 miles an hour, which will get us to Hector. A heck of a lot faster. All right. All right, let's do something else here. Let's see if there's anybody in the chat room. Hey, Jay, uh, or Mo Jay, nice to, nice to see you there. Didn't expect anybody to show up, but uh, glad you made it. Look at uh, the rear, the rear view here. That's recording. Yep, they're all recording.
All right, we're back in the cockpit with you here. All right, now that's the one right here. Uh, let's come up close and see if that makes a difference. Yeah, uh, it says nav data out of date. Simulator thing here. There is, uh, I use Jeppesen charts in, in my 768 Foxtrot Sierra. Um, in the nav world, you can also get Jeppesen charts. You do it through a company called Navigraph. It's about 10 bucks a month subscription. And then you have all your updated uh, Jefferson flight uh, stuff. So I haven't updated my nav data here on the sim, which I'll do after I get done today. Needless to say, since my plane's been, you know, I haven't had access to my plane now for over a month, and it's just freaking killing me, to be honest with you. I'll spare you the details on that. However, um, uh, once I get the plane back, I'll have to update that one. So a little bit of reality here on this one. So uh, one of the things that I like to do, and if you've watched any of the videos, you already know what's happening next, is that once I get up to cruise altitude, um, to keep track of my engine stuff, to make sure that there's nothing strange is happening or things are developing while I'm playing uh, tourist here, uh, I like to go ahead and keep track of all my engine instruments, and I do it every 30 minutes. In fact, I have a, a flight reminder set within the uh, Perspective Plus to remind me every 30 minutes. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go through my routine here on the sim today. I'm practicing, and I'm going to, it's uh, 3.45 our time here, so I'm going to go get our engine instrument reading. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the engine One page Bravo, I'll come up close so you can see it, and I'm going to go through And actually, I don't even have to go to the engine page to do it. Let's go back to here. I just go and get my instruments readings from right here, okay? So I'm going to start with my EGTs, which are at 1650. I'm going to check my CHTs, which are 364. Those are well within the green, okay? I've got 46 oil pressure. I've got 179 oil temperature. Um, I got 17.0 fuel flow, and that's getting me about 73% power. And then what I'll also do is look up at the top here where it says fuel on board. It's 81 gallons, and I'm going to go down here to the throttle button. So I'm going to put left 81, which means on the left tank was 81 when I took this setting right here. So now I've got those instrument uh, readings here. And in another 30 minutes, 415, I'll typically, you know, not typically, I'll get a reminder on the PFD uh, to check my instruments. And so that's a little best practice that I've gotten into that not only helps fill in a little time when you're flying alone and there's nobody to talk to, uh, but also is a good way to um, just keep your mind occupied and keep you engaged and also keep you attempt to keep you ahead of the proceedings of the plane. So right now, we're up here, nice and clear days. So we're going to get rid of our landing light. And let's just for yucks go over here to the engine page. Let's put that landing light on and see how it affects. Landing light is on all at once. If I push the landing light, it should go up one. And it goes up three, four over here, you notice. OK, just keep an eye on this one right here. So I'm going to get you up close. Keep an eye on this one right here. So when I turn the landing lights off, which is on Alt 1, or bus 1, turn the landing lights off, and all of a sudden you see there's less load on Alt 1. Now I'm going to be posting a video here shortly of this very same flight from Henderson to Santa Monica Airport, where I had a bit of an issue with my Alt, uh, Alt 2. And uh, so this is a particular. Uh, relevance to me today. So we're 29.2 miles from Hector. We're cruising along here. We're going much faster. We're going two times uh, the sim speed. So if I'm doing like 300 miles an hour. So this is like flying in a vision jet here, folks. <laughs> All 
or at least we can dream, right? Or let's kick around here. Now, for you folks that are actually contemplating getting yourself a SIM set up, a um, couple of great options out there. I use uh, mostly real SIM gear stuff. I'm waiting to fill in the blanks uh, on my SIM with to make it all real SIM gear. Um, getting equipment these days with all the supply chain issues out there in the real world is a drag, but a reality. So uh, a lot of hurry up and wait. But anyway, um, one of the things that's key to all this is once you have this great flight simulator setup stuff that you can get specifically for Cirrus Network, where they pretty much match the PFD, MFD, the switch panel, your GCU, your throttle quadrant, your side stick, and all of that, right? In fact, if you go all in on the real sim gear cockpit setup, you'll even get um, the equivalent of this, you know, whatever they call that here, the windshield cover, whatever. Um, you can really get this whole thing set up so that it's really like flying. It's the closest you're going to get to flying a Cirrus without actually having to buy one. So um, good stuff here. But the real key to all this is having a great flight model. And I use the Torx Sim Aviation uh, SR22 Turbo Normalized G3 setup, right? Not exactly perfect. I wish they had done one for G6. Maybe they will in the future. But it's still close enough here. And uh, the level of detail in this, this sim setup here is really amazing. And, um, and it really is great practice um, to just keep sharp. So there you have There's my shameless plug for my boys over there. Okay, so I'm going to look in here on the close-up here. And I also have uh, a little button reminder set to change my fuel but the truth of the matter is I'm looking at it constantly right now our left tank is fuller is the fullest one we've got it on the left tank so that's all good um, it's either my constant state of fear and insecurity or just attention to detail or some, somewhere in between those two but I like to keep myself occupied I like to keep ahead of the plane here and thinking about what what could uh, could happen what should happen and so one of the things I wind up doing, oh, there's an alert button, that's the nav out of date button, uh, is I'll come up here frequently and hit this nearest button and look for airports, okay? Um, and so in this case, I got 002, which puts, you know, I've got 11 degree heading to get there. I'm going away from it. That number right here is going up, so that one's behind me. I'll check the one in front of me. That one's getting closer, so that's at 143 heading, which would be somewhere off to my left here, okay. Um, so that's what I'm always looking for, you know, where I would go, where I would land if something kooky, you know, happened in the plane here. God forbid that would be the case, but let's get back to the cockpit direct. Um, God forbid that happens. But if it did, um, I'd like to think that I'll be ready for it. And... Uh, and prepared. So let's go back and let me show you the cockpit here, iPad. So you can see right here that that runway ahead of us, where is 022? I don't just see it on there. That one is 11 miles, CN 23, 12.7 miles. Right now, 12.0. That's behind us. CN we've got Daggett, KDAG at 255, that's 21 miles. And we couldn't get to Daggett right now, so we would probably be putting it somewhere near the to the freeway, um, and probably could land on the freeway. But that freeway to Vegas is usually pretty full. Sometimes a parking lot. Um, so the more likely scenario is I would be getting it close to the uh, freeway there. And God forbid something crazy happened, I'd have to get it down a couple thousand feet over the ground and then pull that parachute. So, November 1 Delta Bravo, Vegas, Lead Visor. Okay, so we're coming up on Hector here, so we should be making a right turn here in a second. Flight plan. That'll be going to 252 heading. So let's just go set it to 252 and see where we wind up. 
This will be coming up here in a minute. Six times speed right now. Okay, there's our little reminder that we make a right turn at 251 right now, and the plane is going to tip over to the right. And there she is, turning to the right. And now we are headed for Bassel. Right, we're coming up, we're going to pass Daggett is going to be, which is Barstow Airport, is going to be off to our right. All right, back in the saddle here. Go back to the full map. Let's just kind of dial it in here. Okay, so we're at Basol is next. <coughs> so basically now we're getting set up here um, for this Kimo 3 arrival here. One of the things that we'll likely get <coughs> in a real flight, I don't know if we'll get it today, is that our, right now we're on our way to Boston. We've got a ways to go here. But somewhere along the way, they're going to come back to me and they're going to say, okay, let's go at or above 8,000 in Bogan, which is we're part of the Kimo 3 arrival. So I'm going to put in 8,000 right now. Zero over here on the PFD the MFD, excuse me. I've, I've scrolled down to Bogut. Now I'm putting in an altitude restriction here of 8,000 feet and I'm going to set it in there, okay? Now, one of the reasons I love to do that, even when you're not flying IFR, is it calculates the top of the set for you, right? So, again, it gives you that little piece of information, keeps you ahead of the ball game a little bit. And those are the kind of things that uh, you come to appreciate when you're flying cross-country IFR uh, flight plans. Um, is that you're constantly setting up for some new sequence here. So uh, now that that's set for 8,000, another thing you'll notice is because that's part of the VNAV feature of the, of the Perspective Plus, it puts the 8,000, that's your VNAV reference altitude there, and it's in pink. Okay, so now uh, I'm set here at 8,000, but what I'll do eventually when he gives me this is that I'm going to go and set my altitude select for 8,000. And uh, I think if I set the VNAV right now, it won't kick in on this one here. And at some point, even on, the, uh, my, on my uh, G6, it won't do it just yet. So I'm gonna, but I'm going to press the VNAV button. Okay, so now it is set up VNAV right here. Okay, so now what will happen is, you know, um, in the real Cirrus Gen 6, don't know about the G3, I'll get a little reminder a minute the VNAV kicks in, it will say VNAV said, had I not set the altitude select from 10,000 to 8,000 to match this VNAV reference, um, that would be the reminder to do that. Okay, but right now we're all set and ready to go. And we're cranking along here at 1.7 times speed here. So I'm cheating. As we had pretty much direct to Bogan which will be our entry point into the uh, Kimo 3 arrival. Okay, let's put our, we don't need him in there. Hi folks, me. The Ren Baron, let's get him out of there. We haven't seen him before. Let's get our uh, iPad in here. That's what I want. Okay, so there's kind of just like I'd have it in my in, in the plane there, the iPad off to the left. Um, and we're just cranking along here. 22 minutes to our VNAV descent. Pretty quiet out here. We might get one additional um, frequency change in here. Take a quick little break here. Go get some water. Of course, I'm going to tell the controller. 
LA Center is here, 768 Foxtrot's here at 10,000. I'm going to take a, take a two minute break here, so I'll be off frequency. Need Foxtrot's here, no problem, just let me know on your back. You got it. LA Center, 8 Fox Trots here, back with you. 8 Fox Trots here, Roger. Connect Joshua, approach 126.1. 1261 for Joshua, 8 Fox here. 126.1, okay, let's go. Back up, let's go up close here. We're going to put in 126.1. Where's 126? Let's go point 0.1. That's Joshua, approach. Okay, let's switch it over. <laughs> Joshua Approach, Sierra 768, Foxtrot Sierra, level 10, 10,000. 768, Foxtrot Sierra, Joshua Approach, good afternoon. The Victor Hill altimeter, 2997. 2997 for Victor Hill, 8 Foxtrot Sierra. Now, one of the things I miss on the simulator that I have <coughs> in the actual G6 is the arrival charts and all that stuff that show up over here, excuse me, on the MFD. I uh, don't have those here. Uh, it would be nice, but you do have those arrival plates here, okay, on the uh, iPad. So let me just put that up there and see if I can put that in there for you. Okay, there's the Kimo 3 arrival. And you can see right here, as I was putting in that 8,000, you can see that's expect 8,000 in Bogus. So what I was telling you is that on, on this flight today, we may or may not get that um, on Pilot Edge. So I'm just kind of going through what I know would happen. I've made this flight to Vegas uh, a bunch of times. So um, it's kind of like flying in the neighborhood me and so it's right there if I need it and or when I need it and then the approach is going to be the R and F two one so I get all of those right here on on the uh, iPad so even if you don't have a G six or G five or G whatever in perspective perspective plus system uh, through the miracle of iPads and those geniuses over at four or five you can have all of that technology that you would have right here on this beautiful perspective plus system right here you could have all of that stuff on your ipad and i think it'd probably cost about a thousand bucks instead of you know a lot more so anyway um good stuff to have there and so that's the g that's the kimo 3 arrival when we get a little closer to bogan i'll show you and we'll follow it in and we'll just make believe that that was over here on the uh on the mfd we're still cranking on now. We're going at 1.4 speed here. Let's go out the back and take a look. There we are. Do a dramatic showbiz turn here, just like Top Gun. I don't know if any of you folks saw that Top Gun with Tom Cruise. I just thought that was freaking awesome. Um, you got to love Tom Cruise's commitment to, to doing it right come in here just like real showbiz uptight on our beautiful little Cirrus.
All right, so everything's looking good. We're 146. Uh, okay, now let's go. I see over here on our on our instruments here. We're getting a little bit, you know, the left tank is drained down a little bit, so we're going to go down here to our throttle quadrant. We're going to switch over to the right tank. We're going to come back up to our default view, and we are coasting along here. Okay, so we're 2.1 miles from Heldy on our way to uh, Palmdale, I believe. Yeah, Palmdale. We're going to head right over to Palmdale. Now, this little speed up function on the sim is very handy. I uh, love that. Because <coughs> it can be a little tedious. It's a little tedious inside the plane. It's funny. On the, I've been editing a flight from, from Henderson back to Santa Monica and a couple of flights on the way there that I recorded a while back and as you know I'm not the fastest editor in the world in fact if there's anybody out there watching or listening today that lives in Southern California <laughs> that's actually really good at Final Cut they could take you know countless hours of flight video and turn them into videos for me I'd be, I'd be willing to talk about taking you up in the Cirrus giving you some flying time in exchange. I don't suspect that's going to, anybody's going to volunteer, but if they're out there, if you know somebody, some youngster would be perfect, some digitally adept kid that can't get enough of that stuff would be my perfect world. Okay, so we're coming up on Nasty now. Healthy to Nasty. One mile over here on our VNAP profile window. we got 11 minutes and 54 seconds to top of descent. So I'm constantly checking that. We're going to click down here and click our nearest buttons here and see what we've got. we got Victorville 124 back over here. Are we moving away from Victorville? Yeah, we're away from Victorville. Everything's behind us so far, so we've got no good options here. If we had to, uh, something went screwy right now be in a whole lot of trouble. We might be able to get to a little airport called Adelanto, um, but we'd probably be coasting down to 2,000 above the ground and uh, either trying to put it on the freeway or um, if that freeway is in doubt, we would likely find the flattest piece of land close to some people and uh, pull the parachute and become a passenger. All right, let's see if anybody... Oh, okay, they got a few more folks in there. <laughs> Tulsa Renew, great videos. Thank you. Is that Tulsa Renew or the Renew? Lance Williams, this is awesome. Uh, thank you, Lance. Pardon me, uh, or forgive my lack of planning just for popping this up today here, but this is really uh, just me practicing, you know, but haven't had a chance to fly here now since June 13th, and what's the day today? What is today? Today is the uh, 21st, so that's five weeks I haven't been in the plane. You talk about a little withdrawal. I'm, I'm dying here. Uh, anyway, so this is my way of doing it, and, and if you're serious about flying a Cirrus, or perhaps you bought a Cirrus, and you're now on the two-year wait list uh, to get that thing, uh, which is, well, oh, there you go. Hi, folks. Uh, if you're waiting for your Cirrus, and you're really serious about learning to fly it properly, if I had it to all over again and there was a Cirrus setup like they have today for us Cirrus pilots um, and you just checked your head at the door and bought <laughs> a very expensive plane that you can't fly for two years uh, I'd go out and pop another 10 grand um, and get a Cirrus sim setup just like the one that, that I have here or you know I could even do better than that today um, and start flying and uh, get comfortable with the avionics because in a high-tech plane like the Cirrus, um, you know, some of the more traditional pilots can, they certainly have their opinions about Cirrus and all the technology and whether it helps you or hurts you as a pilot. Uh, I could 
tell you from my own experience as a guy who started five years ago, um, you know, late in life, that uh, I love all the uh, technology that you have with the Sierras, but I also have a great respect for how much time you need to spend getting up to speed so that you're not going, I wonder what that's going to do. That's, that's, that's bad. We don't want to do that. We don't, what? I don't know. What, what, if I push this one, what happens? You got to, you got to get all that shit worked out. And, uh, I spent lots of hours, uh, when I first got my Cirrus with a little generator out of Santa Monica airport, plugged, plugged, plugged into the, uh, to the port there where I could just sit on the ground and go through all the avionics and, and not be stressed about being up in the air. So all these little tricks you learn are hugely important. And all the things that are built into the Perspective uh, Plus system, like VNAV and so forth, things that you can use to lighten the load of being a pilot, um, are really important and uh, particularly important when it comes to IFR flying. And for when I first started flying, my goal was to just get sport pilot license and so I started on that path decided pretty quickly that I was gonna go ahead and go for the private pilot license and so I bought a plane before I had my private pilot license a great little plane called the Sling 4 it had all kinds of great avionics you know a little mix and match of Garmin G3X screen and some uh, old you know, steam gauges and by the time I got rid of it it was <laughs> as my instructor used to say kind of a man serious I'd taken out all the that stuff and put in um, digital avionics and it prepared me for the Cirrus so anyway I love the Cirrus uh, but it won't fly itself folks <laughs> and the you know, pull of the parachute is not option one uh, flying the plane is option one and so if you're lucky enough to fly a Cirrus you know take the time to learn all the tricks that it can do for you and uh, because uh, getting that stuff right is important. So, okay, enough. I'll get off my soapbox now. All right, so we're coming up on Palmdale. We're 6.9 miles from Palmdale, where we will make a little left turn and start heading for Bogan and uh, the Kimo 3 arrival. So three minutes and 42 seconds we're going to start. So I'm going to kick it off with the high speed here in a second so that we can get to that... Um, top of the descent naturally. All right, so I'm going to go increase, increase, increase. Oh, now how do I get it? There we go. Now I'm out. Okay, now I'm back to normal speed here. All right, let's see if there's anybody in the chat room here. Okay, some new folks. All right, beautiful. <clears throat> uh, we've got Stevenson on there. says, waiting for medical and beginning my self-ground school study for PPL. Do you, re do you recommend SIM for CFI flying practice? Some people I have talked to have mentioned that you can develop bad habits. Well, Stevenson, uh, I presume they mean you can develop some bad habits if you don't practice all the time. So um, when I started studying for my private pilot license, um, I was flying in a little sling, which I just mentioned, and my instructor was a gal by the name of Liz DeStaffney, who was a terrific, not was, is a terrific CFI. She ultimately went to work as a sales rep at Cirrus, and now she's working from Texas, you know, with Aris, which is a Cirrus reseller anyway. Um, at that point is when I first started dabbling with the uh, flight sim world, but there was nothing in the Cirrus world at that point. So I used to, you know, I asked Lizzie, I said, hey, Lizzie, do you mind if we, I've got this little Cirrus or this sim setup I've set up at home. <coughs> Would you mind doing some of my IFR training in my office on, uh, was a Cessna 172? And so we did that and it made a huge difference. And, uh, and then once I got my Cirrus, it was even more important that I spend time on this sim and so by that point I had actually there were starting to be some serious specific you know hardware on the market from Noble Flight Sim and Real Sim Gear are the two main suppliers of Cirrus stuff so it was a huge huge um, part of my training 
before I got my private pilots and on my way to my IFR training. Maybe I got the, the sim after I got my private pilot license, probably when I started my IFR. But I think you can't, you know, you can't do it enough. And the, the key for me was getting the hardware so that I never had to touch the keyboard. I didn't want to be flying the keyboard. I wanted to be able to fly the plane. So you can do that now, um, and it's just terrific. Uh, doing a sim before getting a free proper lessons. If that was your question, I, I've said it to a number of people. Nobody's taken me up on it, and I wouldn't want to say it on you know too loud on a video, <laughs> but because I'm not a CFI, let's get that out of the way. Um, but I I guarantee you, I could take somebody who's flown other planes, or even somebody who's not flown a plane. You could really, really, really teach them the fundamentals of flight um, on. On a, on a simulator, and particularly true if I was taking somebody from scratch on a Cirrus, I could give them a big head start when they actually got in the, in the saddle on, a, on an actual Cirrus. So anyway, that's my two cents, Stephen. So uh, nice question there. Thanks for watching here today. I'm going to get back into the uh, plane here a little bit. We're coming up on top. To, oh, I didn't go to the bottom of the set yet. Okay. She, okay. Joshua Approach, Sierra 768, Fox Rod Sierra at 10,000. You could be getting any lower from Bogut. Great Fox Rod Sierra. Yeah, you can send me 8,000. 8, 8, Fox Rod Sierra. Okay, so now we've blown past. Here's a little trick for you. We've blown past Bogut, so now we're going to go VNAV direct. That didn't work. Okay, so let's go on the menu. VNAV direct. No. All right, well, it's not going to work. Okay, so clear it. Okay, so we went past that. Actually, so look, we're going to go old school. We're going to go vertical speed. And I'm going to go to flight plan. It says I need to go 1,200 feet a minute to get to Bogut at 8,000. So I'm going to pull some power. Whenever in doubt, slow things down. I need to go 1300, it says my target. Where am I finding that information? I'm finding it. Let's get out of there. Right here, it says I need 1345 feet to get to Bogut at 8,000. So I'm going 1300 feet right now, and I pulled the power out a lot to get there. So we're 12, three point miles, three miles from Bogut, and uh, because I want to be there. Now, normally on a, on a normal ATC scenario in Southern California, they would have given us that ahead of time. They would have said, you know, fly at and maintain 8,000 in Bogut. That's the typical routine. Uh, I think we'll get there anyway, looks like. Yeah, we're going to get there. You'll see up here on the on the, uh, the V path is armed. We might actually get armed here and get a VNAV descent there pick it up the hard way. Uh, maybe not. All right, now let me tell you something else. When you go in a descent like this and you pulled out the power, what you pull out, you got to put back in at some point. So once I get close to 8,000, I'm not going to wait till I get there. Once I get to about 8,100 feet, I'm going to start adding some power back into the mix here. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Here's my power back in, so I get back to 75%-ish. Manifold pressure, we're going to pull that back a little bit. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. Very tricky in there. Okay, so now we'll go back to the map here. So now we are into the uh, Kimo 3 arrival here. So now, oh, there you go. Let me put that up on the screen here for you. Let's go over here and let's put in the, the uh, iPad here. Now you can see that we are on the Bogut leg to Kimo. So this is hence the Kimo 3 arrival. Now it also is telling me check your weather. So let's go ahead and check our weather. I'm going to do that by going down here to the uh, GCU. Oh, let's go back over here. Down to the GCU. Now I'm going to just start monitoring COM2. Visual approaches in use. Read back all runway assignments and hold short instructions. Advise on initial contact. You have information November. Okay, so we got November. Santa Monica Municipal Airport. 
Temperature 22, dew point 17, altimeter 29 or 9 or 2, arriving in parting runway 21, visual approaches in use, read back all runway assignments and hold short instructions, advise on initial contact you have information November. Okay, so I'm going to go back down here. Now I'm going to click that off here. I'm going to come back up to the Air Connect, SoCal approach 1342. 1342, 8 Foxtrot here. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to come up top here. First thing I'm going to do is go up top with 134.2. Okay. And talk to uh, SoCal approach. SoCal approach, Sierra 768, Foxtrot Sierra 8000, heading for Kimmo. Foxtrot here, SoCal approach, Santa Monica, two minor two nine or two. Two nine or nine or two for uh, Santa Monica, Foxtrot here. Okay, so let's get all that information. We've got two nine or nine or two for Santa Monica. So let's put that in there. Okay, we're all set there. Let's get rid of the nearest here. Uh, what I was also mentioning is that now I've got my ATA, so that one's done. So now I'm going to just switch over and to put one to one point nine right here, which is my ground frequency at Santa Monica. So now that one's set. I've got 120.1 loaded here. On So now once I get down and they switch me over to tower, I just go down and hit the mic 2 button on the on the audio panel and we're in business. Okay, so now we're at 8,000. We're looking good. And we're about ready to turn into that Kimo 3 arrival. Now you'll notice down here on the Kimo 3 arrival, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can. Right here, it's showing 7,000. So this leg, they'll bring me down to 7,000 is what I'll be looking for. So I'll be patient a little bit, and then I'll start pinging them, saying, when are you going to get me down to 7? They're not going to get me below 5, because you'll notice off to the right here is Burbank Airport. So you got big planes coming out of there. So they're going to keep it. They'd like to keep you as high as you can. The challenge is you got to be at 4,300 at darts. And so typically in this little routine in the real world of Santa Monica Airport, they are, you're getting crunched down there all the time at the last second. So let's go back over here. We're making our turn down into the Chemo 3 arrival here, as you can see. We're looking out that front window. <coughs> so now when I'm flying in, uh, in the real world here, go back to cockpit direct now. We're coming down there, and now we're at 8, and now we're kind of pointing towards the animal. <clears throat> so, now we're coming into the neighborhood here. Now I feel like when I get to here, whether I'm flying across the country with the wife or flying, you know, my sons. Yeah, actually, I flew my wife up to Lake, uh, Las Vegas the other day. Um, this is what I feel. 7,000, uh, 7, it is, and I'm looking for the RNAV 218 Fox Trots here. Fox Trots here, direct darts to send us 6,000. Direct darts to send 6, 8 Fox Trots here, thank you. Okay, we're going to go to 6,000. So that would never happen in the real world here. But we'll put it in there, 6,000. And we're going direct darts right now. So we'll go back to the flight plan. We'll go down here, direct darts, direct, enter, enter. And we'll keep it on nav. Now, normally, that would give you a vectors to final here. So let's go vec. we got 6 as our altitude. So let's go down six, 700 feet a minute. Let's go 800 feet a minute because I like to get down here. Okay, I'm going to pull a little power now. This is when I start to manage my power coming into Santa Monica. Primarily because we're going to get jammed in there at 6,000 because 4,300 is the, the, the height we want to be at. So now what I need to do is load the approach. I'm going to select the RNAV 21. I'm not going to use vectors. Okay, load it. Okay, so we're going direct darts, and there is our approach here. We're going to go direct, enter, enter. Make sure we're going to that one, and we're good. We got 11.7 miles to darts, and we're going way too fast, so I'm going to pull some power here. And pull it back to about 30% here. And then we're going to go back up to our map and do our descent checklist. Altimeter is 2992 for Santa Monica. That's all set. Landing light is on. Let's get our landing light on. Fuel system is good. Mixture of brake oxygen is good. Before landing, seatbelt, shoulder harness is secure. Fuel pump's got mixture. We'll put that up at the last minute, and we're looking good. So let's go back to the map here. Ten miles to darts. 
Let's activate the approach here. Activate approach. We're going direct to dart, so that's all good. Our approach is activated. I'm going to sink my heading up here. So I want more down here. I want to get closer to 6,000 because I need to have some room to make that turn at 4,200. So Cal Approach 8 Foxtrot Sierra at 6,000. Uh, are you going to clear me for the approach at darts? Because uh, i got to be at 4,200 there. Yeah, you're still above my minimum vectoring altitude, so I can't get you any lower for a little bit yet. Yeah, I know. you got to get me past Burbank. Hey, five shots here. Okay. All right, so I've slowed it down a little bit here, folks, because this is where, you know, as I, as I mentioned, he's got us on this Kim 3 approach right here. So let me just put that up here. All right, and so he's, we've got... Burbank off to our right right now. So once we get over there, he can get us a little bit lower. Let's see if we can see Burbank out the back window here. There's Burbank down to the right, tilt down a little bit and tilt uh, go right, rotate right. There's Burbank off to the right that you can see right there. So he's got to keep us at least 5,000 through there. Once we get out here, we're going to make the turn to Santa Monica. Great Fox, that's your dark center above 4,200. Quitter and I have my 200 reach. Darts out are about 4,200 clear for the approach. Thank you, 85 knots here. Okay, so now we're going to put in 4,200 here for darts. We're going to push that thing down even further. And now we're cleared for the approach, and so I'm going to arm the approach now. And we're all set, and we're going to wreck darts. Now, like I said, normally this would be, um, we got to get this baby down here. Let's go. Thousand or something. Pull some power back to about 20, 20% this year. To get to 4,200, we've got the approach armed. So now let's go to our landing checklist. Uh, let's go mixture full right now, fuel pumps in boost. Now this is one little tricky thing on this. Uh, see, I'm okay now, it's gonna be fine. When you put in the uh, fuel mixture back quickly here, it just, it kind of messes with this thing a little bit. Okay, now it's stabilized. There we go. All right. Now we're good. So we got our mixture. We're flipping onto our left tank here. All right. So that's all good. Back to the map here. Okay, we're coming up on darts 2.5 miles. We got 900 feet. We're going to get it done. I'm going to keep pulling out a little power here. It says zero percent, but I wouldn't really have put it back. Barbara, departure, Cessna 522, Juliet Alpha, climbing through 800. That's a little bug there. Five two, two Juliet Alpha, Santa Barbara, approaching half. Trooper Le Comp, there's a little bug for you. Okay, we're going to be at 4200. We're going to be looking good here. Thanks for the altimeter, canceling altitude uh, restriction. Uh, Cessna 522, Juliet Alpha, can I proceed on course? Cancel the altitude restriction, resume all navigation. Yes, you can. Resuming on navigation, All right, canceling so out to pull that power back Alpha, again. Because I want to be at about 100 right here. Okay, so now we're going to put in some flaps here. Slow us down a little bit. We're under our flap speed here. Now we should start picking up the approach here. We're armed, we're ready to go. It's activated, now let's see what happens. Should pick up that glide path here in a second. Now it overswings it just a little bit on the sim here, but not horrible. Now our speed, I'm going to get our speed back in here adjusted because we don't want to be that high. So we're going to be at about 100, 110 is where I like to be in here, and there's 100. I wouldn't be at 61%. And that 40% should do this. Now I think the mixture and all that's okay. Now we're 35, 30%. That's good. Buck, buck 10 coming in here, and we're all set. 
can see Santa Monica out ahead of us, so he'll be switching us over to Santa Monica here shortly. So now I'm going to pull it back to 30%. Now let me get quite to 30. There we go. There we go. Let's sync up our heading. We're heading 214. The runway is 212, so we are right on the money right now. Right now we'd be flying over the Hollywood sign. We're coming over West Los Angeles, Hollywood area here. So you might never get tired of looking at that Santa Monica Bay out there. Okay, now we'll come up here on our map. Okay, we picked up the glide path now, so we're on automation now. I've done my checklist, the mixture is full. All I gotta do is put in flaps two. We'll wait till we get over the freeway for flaps two. Great Fox Shot Zero Connect Santa Monica Tower one two zero point one. Santa Monica one two zero point one, thanks for helping Fox Shot Zero. Okay, now we'll just go down to the GCU and we'll flip to mic two here. And now I got all those already on there. Let's call Santa Monica. Santa Monica Tower, Sierra 768, Fox Rod Sierra, inbound with November on the RNAP 2-1. Sierra 7 to Fox Shots, near Santa Monica Tower, wind 220 at 7, runway 21, clear to land. 21, clear to land, 8 Fox Shots here, thank you. Okay, so we're at 110, we're in our flaps 2 speed here, so we're just going to bring it on in, and uh, I'm going to let the automation do some work right now. Fox Shots, you cut out there, runway 21, clear to land. 21, clear to land, 8 Fox Shots here. All right, so we're coming down basically right underneath us. It, to our right there is Sunset Boulevard. Flying over West Hollywood right now. Santa Monica Ground, hello. Helicopter 1 Delta Bravo, this is high BC 45, uh, Slank Golf, looking for a southern BFR departure with the uh, LA shoreline transition with November. <laughs> so this is right on the money here. Helicopter 1, Delta Bravo. Uh, this point, I'm looking for traffic. 3614, Delta Bravo. 1 Alpha, I'm going to directly departure from the North Ramp. I will take a taxi behind the MN that's down to 1 Delta Bravo. Ready now. I already got 1 Delta. 1 Delta Bravo, runway 21, Exceeding Alpha. 21 via Alpha, 1 Delta Bravo. Okay, we're 2 miles. Nearest, Pierman, 1 here, Charlie, runway 21, north side. Okay, so right up ahead, you can see the light. Okay, One you can see the light. Tower shot departure is approved. The right 270 is a Flash down here for Santa Monica. Two two zero at seven runway two one clear for takeoff. Two one clear for takeoff. One zero Charlie. There are minimum here. Couple departures prior to your arrival. Steerman going down, then a helicopter both uh, straight out. You got it. Okay, so we're in good speed. We're right on the glide path. Let's set our missed approach altitude for 5,000. Now we didn't talk about that. Oh, missed cue there on my part. Sorry about that. Okay, we're coming up on Century City. Got good speed. Two miles final right now. Okay, so now we're under our flap speed, so let's go in here. Coming up on the freeway. So now I'm gonna hit that flaps two down here. Flaps two, come up top, hold that nose down. Thing wants to jump up as soon as you hit those flaps. Okay, we're 500 to minimums. Looking good, good speed. Now I want to see about 90 in here, so I'm going to start gently pulling out some power here, and get us to 90. As I pull out power, I'm usually trimming. And right here, I'm going to get rid of autopilot and fly her in. 
So now when I'm pulling out power, I'm trimming that thing up constantly to keep my angle of attack on the money. Yeah, number one Delta Bravo, just need a couple of minutes. He'll be ready to go after the Sierra. One Delta Bravo, Roger. Speed's good. There's our 90. Low it says. Hold that speed there. We got 88. We're looking good. Get rid of the flight director now. Go to Amper's good. Okay, now I'm pulling out some power. I want to be about 77 over the end there. Pulling out some power gently and trimming. Pulling out more power, trimming. Pulling out more power, trimming. Now my eyes are shifting down to the end of the runway, pulling out the power. Just trim me and let it run out of gas there. Okay, put her down there just like putting a baby to bed. All right, give it a little pump on the brakes there. Power's all the way out. Flaps one is up. Flaps two is up. Let's kick out here on the first taxiway, which tells me I did a decent job. Turn and now give it a little power to get her out of it. Kind of overcooked it there. All right. Now I'll switch down to... Oh, okay, come on. Sierra 768 Fox, shot the air. Taxi park can be Alpha. I'm in this frequency. Taxi Alpha with you to uh, 85 shots here. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to do this just like I actually do at home here. So we're going to go on 2 1, so no need to switch Santa over. Yeah. 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 Okay, so this is where we're going to go down here toward the end. This is where I'd actually park my plane down here, but we're going to park today. We're going to go park next to the Sierra. I actually go down here. Yeah, I need your position as a distance and a direction. I am 10 miles uh, from this, uh, to your south. I just took off from um, Oceana, 932 Victor. All right, so I'm going to just park it in here, kind of like I do at home here. Report three mile final, 932 Victor. You can't step on me, sir. 9328 Victor, make straight in runway 29 report 3 mile final. Okay, so normally I would just be in here and we would just three be parking. 3 mile final. 29 9328 Victor. Do you have information X-ray? I do have information X-ray. 9328 Victor. Okay, so this is where I would park right here. These planes are like, they're not real planes, so I'm not going to worry about it. We're going to put it right in here. And uh Stop it right there. Okay, I'm going to hit the parking brake. I'm going to turn my fuel pump off. I'm going to cycle and then get it back on. And that's working. And then I'm going to pull the mixture back. And then we will lose our power. And then we're going to click all these babies off. But before we do, we're going to go get our final fuel, which is 68. That's what we start ended with. Okay, and then I'm going to go down here in the uh, glove box. I'm going to go glove box you. I'm going to open the glove box. I'm going to take Seven down Delta, Bravo, come back Los 5048 is my engine. 5045 uh, is the engine. 504.8 was the Hobbs and 68 was my... Uh, so we're going to close that glove box. We're going to go back up top. And we're going to switch all these things off. Then I am going to come back into the cockpit, <laughs> and thank you for joining me. My name is Steve Rennie. I am the Ren Baron. That was a little flight from Henderson Airport to Santa Monica, a little IFR flight plan. I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, hopefully I'll be back up in the real plane soon here. So anyway, thanks for joining me here today, um, and hope to see you again real soon here. So that's it for me today. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Yeah.